always been a healer. His blessing has always been sure. No question about God at all. This happened in the, the present Siri, city of Tiberias. And uh, Tiberias was uh, at that time still named Tiberias. And it's on the west coast of the Sea of Galilee. There is a man, a rich ruler, that lived, a ruler of the synagogue. His name was Jairus. And Jairus sent a message to Jesus and said that his daughter, who was about 12 years of age, his daughter was ready to die. She's at the point of death. He said, if you would just come to my house and touch her, even now she may be dead, in Matthew it said. Even now, she may be dead. If you'll just come and touch her, come and lay your hand upon her, and she will live. Now, I got to tell you something. That's faith. It reminded me immediately of Brother Shampo when he uh, came last week, and he said, if you'll just pray, God will heal her. That's miracle faith, isn't it? You have to get in miracle territory before something like this will happen in your life. But God is a miracle-working God. God is a miracle-working God. That promise does not wear out. It does not change with the passage of time. God is a miracle-working God yesterday and tomorrow and today. God is still a miracle-working God. Jesus is still passing by. Everyone who touches him is going to live. While Jesus was on his way, get this picture now. There's a large crowd following him because here came a, the leader of the, the temple, uh, the local one. His name was Jairus, and he, in front of everybody, he told them, Jesus, come to my house. My daughter is at the point of death, but if you will lay hands upon her, if you will just lay hands upon her, she's going to be well. Can you say amen? amen? Now, I believe that with all of my heart that God can work miracles like that. God is a miracle working God, and he will do that in your life. He will change absolutely everything for you. God will do it for you today. He'll do it for you yesterday, and he will do it for you tomorrow. God is a miracle working God. Do not doubt that for a moment. God is a miracle. When all the activity is over, I'll carry on with this sermon. Amen. I said God is a miracle working God. Somebody's going to get a miracle here this morning because the devil's been messing all day long. Amen. Somebody's come for a real blessing. It's going to happen in your life. God's going to do it for you. Amen. God is a miracle working God. And while Jesus was on his way to work a miracle for someone, while he was on his way, a miracle is going to happen. So don't think that Jesus can't move in more than one way at the same time. Not only can God heal somebody in Beaumont Hospital of cancer, God can heal somebody here today. We weren't even there, but we sent the word. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen, Brother Ross. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. He was on his way to pray for this young girl who was 12, listen to this, about 12 years old. A big crowd gathered around Jesus and Jairus, and they go marching through the city now. Get this. It's a huge crowd. Here is the leader of the synagogue, and here is a young prophet named Jesus. The crowd begins to follow them. It fills the whole street. There's nothing else can be done as they're coming by. And then suddenly, a hand reaches underneath all of these people as they're passing by, 
and touches the hem of his garment. All of a sudden, Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? I promise you right now, Jesus knows when you touch him. I promise you right now, you'll know when you touch Jesus. You and I are people who know how to reach out and touch Jesus in faith, aren't we? Can't you call on Jesus and expect an answer? And if Jesus can't come in person to your house, what else can happen? I promise you, I know what can happen. If you want a miracle, reach out and touch him. Amen. Huh? Another place it says, uh, you're not even worthy. I'm not even worthy for you to come to my house. And Jesus said, I'm coming. Just send the word only and my servant will be healed. Jesus is a healer. That's what he does. He doesn't have to get up and get ready to be a, be a healer. He's already a healer. I don't know about you this morning. I didn't have to get up and get ready to be a believer. Amen. I was a believer when I went to bed. I'm a believer when I woke up this morning. I'm a believer right now in miracles. Aren't you? Sure you are. At the point of death, just come and touch her. And Jesus said, I will. And much people followed him. Mark 5, 24, it says, and they thronged him. There were so many people around him. He could hardly move. Mark uses a word here, uh, uh, which means they press together on all sides. There is people in front of him pressing on him, people behind him, people on both sides, all around him. People were trying to get close to Jesus. Now listen, Jesus stopped. Wait a minute. Somebody touched me. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know if anybody in this modern day is going to get this message here today. But I'll tell you, it doesn't matter who else is there and who's not there and who's going to be here and who's not going to be here. And it doesn't matter out who come and who didn't come. It doesn't matter if you got a mask or not. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you right now, if you touch Jesus, something's going to happen in your life. When you touch Jesus, a miracle is on its way. Who touched me? I'd, uh, you know, I'd love Jesus to come down here this morning and walk around this church saying, Who touched me? Hallelujah. I'd like you to have that testimony this morning. When you leave here, I'd like you to start telling everybody, I was in church, but they didn't even pray for nobody, so I went ahead and I touched Jesus myself. Hallelujah. I touched him. That's a reach out of your faith, which is what you're going to have to do if you want a miracle. They were choking him. They were crushing him together. There was a crowd. Uh, I don't know if anybody's, we don't have crowds like this anymore. Maybe no place in the world will ever have them again. But I was at Wembley Stadium in uh, 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 England. England. In Wembley, England, and there was a soccer match. I went out there. Somebody told me that you ought to go see it once in a lifetime to see this kind of crowd. It's a finals. It's a championship. And so I went out there. I didn't know what kind of people I was getting involved with. You know, I thought riots and gangs would happen in, <laughs> in some foreign country somewhere. But they started surrounding me, not to touch me. I got caught up in the crowd. I could not move. I could not breathe. And when the crowd started going that way, I was going that way with them because I couldn't turn back. I couldn't get out. There were so many people that after a while, they crushed each other. <laughs> I think 12 people died at the soccer game. Huh? Not, uh, they crushed each other. What I'm trying to say to you, that there's this kind of crowd here. People were moving along that way. So many people around Jesus. And all at once he stopped and he said, Who touched me? No, the, uh, these disciples, they looked at Jesus and they said, well, Lord, look at the crowd here. And you say, Who touched me? How can you say that? Some people don't understand this. But you can be in church with a thousand unbelievers that don't even believe in healing. But you can touch Jesus. What if some do not believe? It doesn't change your faith, does it? Amen. 
If you're in a non-believing church, you can still get a miracle because Jesus would be there to see you. Amen. When you touch him, a miracle is going to happen. And all of a sudden, a woman out of the crowd said, I touched you. I'm a, uh, I, I can just imagine this here. I don't know where they touched Jesus. Somebody, some people say they touched his prayer garment or they, they touched the hem of his garment, the bottom of his, his robe or his whatever he was wearing. I don't know. But I do know this one thing, that there was enough power in his clothes that when she touched him, a miracle happened within her. She felt within herself that a miracle had happened. You and I today need to understand how miracles work. It's not when the preacher touches you. It's when you touch Jesus. Amen. When you touch Jesus, that's when the miracle happens. You can run through a hundred prayer lines and every preacher from here to Benny Hinn can lay hands on you or blow you down. Hallelujah. But I promise you one thing, until you touch Jesus, nothing's going to happen. You need to learn how to touch Jesus this morning in your faith, in the spirit. Hallelujah. If you want to get a miracle, you have to touch Jesus. The Bible says she came in the press behind him. And she reached out and touched him. And when she touched him, there was a cleansing power of God that flowed through her. We don't have, have a thing called an issue of blood anymore, but what it was, was she never stopped. She started a, a uh, well, you know what it is, ladies, and it, she never stopped. It just continued. The flow was continued. You and I, uh, being Gentiles and being Christians, do not understand what they went through as Jewish women. They could not touch anybody during that period. They could not be touched by anybody. They could not sit in the same chair with anybody else. They couldn't hug their children. They couldn't prepare a meal. And they couldn't sit with everybody else when they ate. And they had to have their own utensils. Because when they said unclean under Jewish law, that's what that was, they believed that was. You and I uh, uh, cannot know the agony of this woman who went through 12 years of this kind of torture every day and she spent all of her living on doctors and didn't get any better at all. Oh, hallelujah. All of her living. You know, uh, she didn't have an HMO. She didn't have, uh, 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 what, what's that, Humana. She didn't have uh, uh, whatever it is that people have nowadays. She didn't have insurance. She had to suffer through this by herself many times. And she couldn't touch anybody and nobody could touch her. And where she sat upon a chair, it was considered unclean. Hallelujah. If you notice, if she did not touch Jesus' hand, she did not touch his body. She touched the hem of his garment. The answer is very obvious here. If she had touched him, he would have been unclean. And you can't do that to the Son of God. And so she touched his garment, the next best thing. I wonder if she knew the law or or knew exactly what she could not get away with. If you touched anybody, you made them unclean with you. You know, I don't know if you know what this is about. This is about sin. (laughs) Huh? (laughs) This, This is about... Sin touching you and you touching sin. You can't get away from it. You can't, you can't go where sin goes. You can't do what sin does. You can't be around sin people. If you do, it's going to rub off on you. Amen. You can't avoid it. It's going to be with you. you even in your mind, you're, if you see things that are evil, it's here. Your mind records that. You know, I get, it's tragic when they keep showing the same accidents over and over again. It's tragic when they sh- keep showing the same riots over and over again. It's tragic when they keep showing the same murders over and over again. You know why? It is registered right here. That's why the Bible says you must be 
transformed by the renewing of your mind. Only one way to do that is Jesus. And when Jesus was standing there or being carried along by the crowd and the woman reached out and touched the, she came low. You got you see this now. She didn't get up and push elbow around. Instead, she came low and touched the hem of his garment. You know, she was willing to do anything in order to get a miracle and be next to Jesus. All of a sudden, something happened. I want you to know something here. Twelve years, she had an issue of blood. Twelve years. Isn't it interesting that she had had this disease as long as Jairus' daughter was living. His daughter was 12 years old, and she had been sick for 12 years. You think that's got to do anything with each other? I think so, huh? because she was about to undergo a new birth herself. Hallelujah. And when Jesus went in there on his way, on his way to pray for somebody else, God did a miracle in, in another person's life. This work is never done, child of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't think you're going to pray one prayer one time in your life and God give you an answer and then you're done. Hallelujah. It's not one and done when you're in Jesus. Instead, what's going to happen, if you learn how to pray one time while you're praying for somebody else, God can do a miracle for somebody down the road. You ain't listening to me. I prayed for one man in the hospital one day who was given up to die and the person in the next bed got healed. They heard the prayer. Hallelujah. The man I was praying for, you know, he, I don't even know if he knew I was there or not. You know, that he was so drugged up. But I do know one thing. The person on the next bed heard me when I prayed and started praising God because God had healed them. On my way to pray for somebody else, God healed the man over here. Your life is going to be exactly the same way because God is not limited. And God may have had uh, Jairus come and see Jesus to be on the way so this woman could be healed. He called her daughter of Israel. This woman was going to be healed by the power of God. You have to understand that God is a healer and you can't bind him, you can't stop him, you can't get in his way, you can't hinder him. God is a miracle working God. Amen. Amen. God is a miracle working God. It doesn't even matter who says it. Hallelujah. Anybody can say it. My daughter called me uh, last night and she told me a beautiful story. I'd, I'd like to recount it to you if you don't watch my, my, my Facebook posting every day. I'm on uh, every morning. I post six days a week. On the Sabbath day, I take off. But here, this is what happened. You all know about the Nazis, right? About the concentration camps. Uh, they weren't just in Germany. They weren't just in Central Europe. One of them was also in Holland, the Netherlands. They arrested people there. If they dissented or weren't a part of the government or had anything bad to say about Germany and about uh, uh, Brother Hitler, amen. And so here, Corey Ten Boom, anybody ever hear that name? Corey Ten Boom and her sister, Betsy, were put into a concentration camp. They were deprived of food, nearly starved. They worked at least 12 hours a day. They weren't given any new clothes to wear. They were not able to bathe themselves. They, and when they started to say something, they were hit and knocked down. All of this going on. Listen, we think we got it bad now. Uh, it's nothing compared to that. And right now, in the midst of disaster, I have found that's when God really speaks to you. In the middle of a disaster, that's when God can get in touch with my mind better than any other time. When everything's going wrong, God has a way of moving by his spirit at that time. This girl, Betsy, in this concentration camp, had three dreams. And she told her sister about them. And she looked around and she said, how can this be? One of the dreams is this. She said, 
I dreamed of an orphanage and they painted it green where all of these little children that are in here are going to be kept safe until they grow up. And um, she looked around and she said, well, I don't want to doubt God, but I'll have to wait and see what happens here. Well, when the war was over, listen, Betsy had died in the concentration camp. When the war was over, the commandant of that concentration camp, listen now, he went to them and said, I want to buy that land because I am going to make an orphanage for all the children that had to live there. The man who had persecuted them, now God was making him do exactly what her dream said. I don't know how you feel about this, but it lets me know one thing, that no matter how the, bad the situation gets, God is going to be there, and he is going to help you, and if you listen to him, he'll give you a vision for the future in the midst of trouble. Everything going wrong for you right now? God will give you a vision now. He'll open the door now. There will be a blessing now for you. That's the way God works and operates. So here you go. Jesus wasn't paying any attention to this woman. Jesus was following Jairus to go to his house. But a woman that nobody saw sneaked up underneath everybody else and touched the hem of his garment and received a miracle on the way to work a miracle. God's power is real. God, huh, if God ministers to somebody else, God will minister to you. Amen. Amen. If you're suffering with cancer, think of cordial uh, uh, shampoo. Hallelujah. God's touched her. God can touch you. Amen. If you need a miracle, you believe in a miracle for somebody else, and God may work a miracle in your life. Listen, i got to tell you, let's, you, you can't be selfish about this blessing because it's not yours to give and it's not yours to take away. You have to rejoice when you see a blessing happen. You have to be, this is Palm Sunday. This ought to be rejoicing Sunday. Everybody ought to be as happy as they can be. Hallelujah. There should be joyful people serving God today. And while I'm having my joy, God can work a miracle. While you're all upset, while you're in trouble, while everything's going wrong, God can work a miracle. Listen carefully. In the press, she came behind him. Now listen, I've analyzed this as much as I can. But she kept on saying within her, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I can touch, she kept saying within herself, as she was pressing her way through, she kept saying this to herself. This is going to be my point of release. When I touch that hem of his garment, I'm going to be healed. It's going to release the power of God then. Amen. Sometimes we don't make enough statements of faith. And then she pushed her way through after she kept on saying, she kept on pushing. Maybe that ought to be a lesson to us. Don't ask one time and quit. You know, I, hey, I'm a faith preacher too. I've been around when most of these faith sermons that everybody else is preaching, I was around when they were written, all right? What I'm trying to tell you, this idea that if you ask once, you don't have to ask anymore, I don't necessarily think it's true. I ask and I don't stop asking. Amen. John 14, ask and you shall, that word aorist tense, ask and you shall receive. Aorist tense means you did it once and now you're going to do it again and keep on doing it. If you ask for a miracle, keep on asking for a miracle. Don't ask one time and quit. Amen. Don't ask just one time. You want something from God? Keep on asking. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking. Keep on asking God to do it. If you knock, the word means keep on knocking. Uh, you, you, uh, anybody ever go to anybody's house and knock on the door and you could hear them in there but they didn't come to the door so what did you do? Well if you was me you'd keep on knocking. <laughs> come on say amen. Hey I hear you in there come on out hallelujah. 
Some people knock one time and, you know, they're so sheepish and they're knocking. That's about it. Some people knock on the door with Jesus and it's like they're doing an imposition on Jesus. Well, Jesus, if you don't mind today, uh, forgive me for even asking you this. You got so much on your mind keeping Jupiter from running into Mars. So, you know, Lord, uh, forgive me. We, I don't mean no harm, Jesus, if, but if you can find it in your heart today. I, you know, I've heard prayers like that. <laughs> I've gone to church where they say, uh, we don't mean no harm now, Lord. <laughs> if you can find it in your, in your heart just to come by and see us today. No, that ain't the way Jesus wants you to do. If you want something, ask for it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you need something, ask for it. Amen. If you want more, ask for it. If you want power, ask for it. If you want healing, ask for it. Yeah. Seek it. Where would I get it at? Amen. You get it from Jesus. You need to find where Jesus is and then press your way through and touch the hem of his garment. Keep pushing. Keep on pushing. Keep pushing until it happens. I know what you want. Yes. Well, you got to keep after it. Did Jesus know what you, he didn't even know she was there. Oh, I guess in the cosmic sense and in the great spiritual sense, the mind of God, he knew she was there. But there's one thing I, I'm sure. He would not have asked who touched me if he knew who it was. He said, who touched me? Lord, you mean in this crowd? So many people pressing in against you and you ask who touched you? Well, I'm telling you right now, church, you need to touch Jesus and it don't matter who's sitting around you. It don't matter who's with you and who's not with you and who's on this side of the church and who's on the other side of the church. You need to get out and touch Jesus and touch the hem of his garment. If you want a miracle, you have to touch Jesus. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Amen. Then your life will never be the same, the song says. Today, it's not any different if you want a miracle from the Lord. I'm trying to be as ready at this as I can. You have to press your way through. You have to do that. Somebody said, well, if you only had enough faith. Well, this woman, it doesn't mention she had any faith. She just kept saying within herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be made whole. What is your faith confession? What are you saying to God? What are you saying within yourself? Are you saying, if I can just get there, I know I'm going to get a miracle? If I can just touch Jesus, I know I'm going to get a miracle? Well, that's your answer right there. Keep pushing, keep pressing, keep reaching, keep believing, keep holding on. And until we do that, I don't know. Maybe you'll have to be a rich ruler in the temple to get Jesus to come and heal your daughter. But amen. I'm not a rich ruler. <laughs> I'm not in the temple. I ain't got no money, no tango dinero. Amen. I don't have any. I'm not able. I can't afford a doctor. You know, uh, a, a friend of mine that I brought from Haiti, uh, me and uh, Reverend Al, uh, he adopted, uh, he and Wilma adopted this little boy and his brother. They were uh, grandchildren of uh, President Maglior that he finally escaped from Haiti uh, and was nearly killed, but he left his family behind. And Stephen and Stanley were the two boys. Stevie, this past week, not this past week, but three weeks ago, had a stroke. And it was amazing. He had a stroke, and his entire left side was paralyzed. He couldn't talk, didn't know where he was. They rushed him to the hospital. And at the end of this, to add insult to injury... The girl he married, Deanna, is a really sweet Christian girl. Out in, this is in California. And uh, uh, they sent her a bill, the hospital did, for $118,000. My Lord, how can anybody pay that? He didn't have any insurance. He'd have, he's a citizen now, but that's about as far as he got. You have to realize that sometimes you can get news like that and it's absolutely devastating. They called me and asked me to pray for Stevie. I did. I prayed for Stevie. 
I believe God, I didn't know Deanna was going through all of this, but I asked God to make a way for all of these. Reverend Al called me uh, Friday and told me this, and I talked to Deanna on the phone. She said, I had the bill in my hand, and I had, I, I had started paying on it. She said, I, I don't make much money, but I was sending them like 50 or or $100 and, and writing a letter to them and saying, uh, j just be patient. I'll, I'll pay this no matter how long it takes. So they called her on the phone. She said, hey, the bill that you sent me today is $123,000. What happened? You add an interest on this? No, that was a real figure, $123,000. She said, well, if you'll give me time, I'll pay it because he is recuperating right now. He is getting better and he's getting stronger. And maybe, you know, it's working out that he's able to take care of himself better. And the lady on the end of the line at the fan finance committee at St. Agnes Hospital in Fresno, California, you can call and find out if they'll tell you. They said, well, we look down at the bottom of the page and you have a zero balance. She said, what does that mean? She said, it's paid. Not only is it paid, but we see here you've paid over $400 on this bill. We're sending that money back to you. I wish somebody would shout amen. Can you believe God is able? Well, she touched the Jesus. Hallelujah. She touched the hem of his garment. You can too. God is a miracle working God. And I want you to know it here today that no matter what the problem is, even none of us are in a, a camp in Germany in World War II. We don't have it that bad, but some of us are facing real serious money problems and health problems and issues. I want to tell you today, God's a miracle worker. God will do it for you. God will make a way where there doesn't seem to be any way. Amen. Someone here, maybe this is your first time ever to reach out and try to, yourself to touch God. You know, we're, we're, so, uh, uh, we're so attuned nowadays. We've got faith healers and we've got people who are, are powerfully anointed and prophets who can speak in tongues and tell you what's going to happen in your life and everything else that is about you. But can I tell you something? There is no miracle that's as sweet as <laughs> when you pray and God answers you. I wish somebody would say amen. You talk about wonderful knowing that God hears you when you pray. We used to have a song we said, and told nobody but the Lord. Hallelujah. Now everybody tells everybody everything. Amen. And, and uh, talking ain't enough on the phone. Now you got to put it on social media <laughs> and everything else. What if you only told nobody but the Lord? Well, that's enough faith to have. You can tell Jesus and you can call on the Lord and you're going to get an answer. Can somebody say amen? You look at your neighbor and say, you better listen to this. Hallelujah. Mark 10, 48. Here is another man. Oh, hallelujah. I love this story. How many remember uh, uh, Brother Corey that came last year, the blind keyboard player, the Indian? Uh, he got mad at Jonathan because Jonathan kept calling him an Apache, and he's, an, he's a Pima Indian. <laughs> he said, I'm a Pima Indian. <laughs> well, we have a nickname for him. We called him Blind Bartimaeus <laughs> in good humor. But anyway, here's the story, Mark 10, 48. When you're ready to touch Jesus, it doesn't matter if Peter, Paul, and John, and all the apostles, every one of them tells you to shut up. Because that's who told him to shut up. Who goes there? Jesus of Nazareth passes by. And Bartimaeus started calling, Hey, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And you know what the disciples did? Look, do you have an appointment? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, say amen. I tried to go, uh, go get my blood checked the other day, and I didn't have an appointment. I said, what if I'm dying? Well, if you're dying, go to the emergency. Well, I said, it ain't sure it ain't no emergency. Hallelujah. But you know, 
<laughs> the disciples said, hold your peace. The master's passing. He said, that's what I'm saying. The master is passing by. Hey, Jesus, thou son of David, don't pass me by. You know, I got two examples here. One's a blind man and the other is a woman who had an issue of blood and both of them called on Jesus until they got an answer. They wouldn't have listened to the woman, so she pressed her way through and touched the hem of his garment. What I'm trying to tell you here today is either one of these ways is going to work for you if you want it to. Jesus is coming by, and listen, if he doesn't stop in your aisle and lay his hand upon you, you call on him. Hey, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I got news for you right now. Many people don't understand the way this thing works. When Jesus, when Bartimaeus heard about Jesus coming, he was blind. When he heard the crowd was coming, he was blind. When he cried, who goes there, he was blind. When he cried, have mercy on me, he was still blind. When Jesus heard him above all the crowd, he was still blind. When they told him to be quiet, he was still blind. When Jesus stopped in the way, he was still blind. Bartimaeus was blind. When Jesus called to him, Bartimaeus was blind. When Bartimaeus stood up, he was still blind. As he came to Jesus, he was blind. When Jesus saw his faith, and he said it, he was still blind. When he requested, Lord, uh, that I might receive my sight, he was still blind. When he asked for healing, he was still blind. But when Jesus spoke, thy faith hath made thee whole, his eyes opened. Hallelujah. Look at all that. Blind, 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 blind. Ten blinds before he got to his eyes opening. Hallelujah. You can still be in trouble this morning, but all you have to do is touch the Lord's morning. And when you do, everything's going to change. Hell will back up. Demons will tremble. The sky will stand still. Hallelujah. The Jupiter ain't going to run into Mars. When Jesus stops and he touches you, speaks to you, thy faith hath made thee whole. Amen. Your faith is in the calling. Your faith is in the struggle. Your faith is reaching out to God. When everything else tells you not to do it, that it doesn't matter, and there's no need for you to do it anymore. Listen to me. God will still answer you. If every doctor, not only in the United States of America, but if every doctor says you're going to die, listen to me. Jesus can say live and make a liar out of all the doctors. If the banker tells you he won't loan you any money at all to buy a house, can I tell you something? Jesus will give you a house. Not even run it through the bank. Won't even have to pay for it for 25 years. So that house is mine. How much you owe on it? Oh, about 100 million. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but it's mine. <laughs> I'm paying taxes on it, so it's mine. That's what we think. Can I tell you something, child of God? God can give you one. He said, I'm going to give you a house that you didn't even have to build. Does anybody believe what I'm saying here today? Jesus said, I'll give you a vineyard that you didn't even have to plant. I'll give you wells that you did not have to dig. I'll give you fruit trees that are going to bear in their season and you didn't even have to plant them and all you have to do is reach up and get an apple every once in a while. What God will do for us, we have yet to ask him for these kind of miracles. I am a miracle believer. I believe that God is a miracle worker. I believe God can make a way out of no way. He can make water come through a rock and flood through the desert. God is a miracle worker who will rain down manna from the sky. Well, Brother Ross, haven't you ordered your survival food yet? Yes, every day. I said, thank you, Jesus. You are my bread that came down from heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. Well, you got you to put something back. Well, I got to tell you, you're looking at a preacher that ain't got no, nothing to fall back on except Jesus. Amen. 
Somebody said to me, said, Brother Ross, how come you don't have millions and millions and millions of dollars? And my answer was, she, the other preachers do. They have jet airplanes. They have all this. How come, what, what's the matter? Don't you have any faith? If you was a real man of God, you would have a jet airplane. I said, oh, that's, uh, let me, what scripture is that now? <laughs> the reason I live upstairs in the corner of this church is because when God gave me money for missions, I gave it to missions. I spent it on what I said I was going to spend it on. Somebody said, well, we gave you money here. Well, you're sitting in the money that you gave me. And if you didn't buy that chair, somebody else did for you. So you ought to thank Jesus for it. <laughs> or else you'd be sitting on the floor. Come on. <laughs> Come on, say amen. I'd, I'd recommend the chair instead of the floor. But <laughs> You're welcome to sit wherever you want to. Amen. Jesus gave, somebody said, well, Brother Ross, who financed you? I said, I go to the bank of J-E-S-U-S. -S. Hallelujah. God wants me to have it. God's going to make a way for it. If God has chosen to bless you, and he has. He said, I'm going to make you the first and not the last, the greatest and not the least. And if anybody stand against you, I'll smite down every hand that rises against you in judgment. I'll command a blessing on the work of your hands so that everything you set your hand unto will prosper. How many got a hand? Amen. You got, you, got, you got two hands. My God, you get a double portion there. Hallelujah. He said, I'll command a blessing on the work of your hands. Hallelujah. That everything you do will prosper. What have you been doing? <laughs> well, <laughs> some of you have been changing that remote control on your TV, and every time you change it, somebody else on the TV makes more money. <laughs> So you got the blessing in your hand. Stop blessing him on TV. Get the blessing out here on your table. Get it in your driveway. Get it on your clothes that you wear. Get it on that sweet smelling perfume you can spray on yourself. Hallelujah. You can, do you, you can have anything, anybody that has ever had any blessing from God anywhere in the world at any time, God will do the same thing for you because God is no respecter of persons. It's a bunch of hogwash that God loves one more than another. Amen. Don't tell me that kind of stuff. God loves you. God loves you with an everlasting love and he ain't going to change his mind. The world loves you one day and hates you the next, but God isn't that way. God is a compassionate and loving God that extends his mercy unto generations. Where's that scripture at? You don't hear them preachers preaching that. They want to tell you that God visits your iniquity to the third. What about the blessings of God that's on you? God said, I'll bless you, and not only are you going to be blessed and your family be blessed, I'm going to bless your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. I'll give them an inheritance. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. We need to get some of that old time faith, miracle, hope in our heart that lets us know that God is going to take care of you. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. Hallelujah. God will take care of you. He will bring a blessing into your life. Stop going around with all this negative stuff that the devil is spouting out every day on TV and through the mouths of many prophets about the Desperate situations of the end of time. Somebody said, Brother Ross, you need to read this on Facebook because it tells about how the devil is going to invade America. I said, I, I, I wrote back to him and I said, don't send me that. I said, tell me how God's going to invade America. I got scripture for me. They don't have any. They have suspicion. Things are getting worse. Devil must be getting powerful. My Bible tells me the knowledge of God shall cover the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. God's getting ready. Hallelujah. I want to be in this. I want the Holy Ghost anointing. I want the power of God on the inside of me. I don't want to be left behind. Hallelujah. Lord, I haven't served you so long to be left behind now. Hallelujah. Get your mind on God. Get your mind off some things. Turn it off. Change the channel. Get involved in the heavenly channel with God. Yeah. 
King George. This, this is during World War II, King George. No, that king. The king couldn't talk well, you know, the king's speech, if you ever saw the, or read the story. But he was on radio delivering a message <laughs> to everybody on BBC. The king is speaking about the war. And so he's talking. While he's talking, can you believe this? Somebody, they didn't have Jimmy Vickers there with his Jimmy tape to tape everything up. Somebody left a wire loose that connected somewhere and one of the wires fell off and the power went off everywhere. This man who was a king's aide went over there and grabbed one end of the wire with one hand and the other end of the wire with the other so the power would flow through him. He could have died. They said, don't you know you could have died? He said, just think. All the power of the king had to flow through me. Come on, somebody shout amen here. <laughs> is, is, can anybody preach on that? Hallelujah. The power of God has to flow through us. If the word is going to go forth, it has to flow. Get a hold of one end of this wire. Hallelujah. <laughs> Live wire. That's you. Hallelujah. Get a hold of it and let the power flow through you so the word can go forth. If you do, I believe God will do it. Do a miracle in your life. Bartimaeus, keep calling. Woman, keep reaching out. It's the only way the miracle is going to happen. Bow your head, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah.